Hello folks, thank you for joining this month's Connect with Control M session. My name is Ryan Rodriguez. I'm a technical support analyst for the Control M team here at BMC. Today we'll be talking about the Control M web. Our panelists for today are Chris Green and Froilan Reyes. I'm going to recommend we go to full screen mode during this presentation by pressing the full screen button. Please note that this presentation is available via the files pod at the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A pod. We'll address those questions at the end of the session. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We'll start with an overview of the Control M Web and briefly go over its architecture. The demo will show you the Control M Web itself and a few issues you might come across. Then we'll go over a summary of what we discussed. We'll list some resources including additional knowledge articles and then we'll finish with a live Q&A session. The Control M Web delivers complete support for your workflow lifecycle from job planning to execution, monitoring, and troubleshooting. The Control M Web can be used on your local web browser to manage the day-to-day -day operations for most of your Control M users, which will eliminate the need to install and maintain the desktop client. Here we have the architecture for the Control M Web and the various processes that make up its internals. The Control M Web is a microservice on the Control M Enterprise Manager server that manages the web client and is dependent on the Control M Enterprise Manager web server. Okay, now let's begin with our demonstrations. So this, for this first demonstration, we're going to log into the Control M Web and just take a look around. But before we get started, uh, it's important to note that to access the different domains in the Control M Web, you need to install some additional components. For access to the planning domain, you will need to have the Control M Workload Change Manager installed. And for access to the monitor, monitoring domain, you will need to install the Control M Self Service. And finally, for access to Control M Managed File Transfer Dashboard, you will need that installed as well. More information can be found on the resources slide at the end of the presentation. Here we have the login screen for the Control M Web. And let's log in. Okay, we can see that the planning, monitoring, and managed file transfer domains are, uh, are not available. And that's because I don't have self-service or workload change manager or managed file transfer installed just yet. So let me get those installed. Okay, now that these are installed, let's log out and log back in. Okay, now that we have self-service, work on change manager, and managed file transfer installed, we can see that we have access to their, their domains in the uh, dashboard here. And for our second demonstration, if you will recall that the Control M Web is controlled by the Control M Web microservice, so if the Control M Web microservice is down, you will not be able to access the Control M Web. Let's see this in action. So here we are in our Control M Configuration Manager. Let's take a look at the microservice for Control M Web. There it is. So this should always be up, but if it is not up or, or um, or if it's you know, down, then you will not be able to access to Control M Web. I'm going to manually set this to down just to show you an example of what you'll see. Okay, I have manually set this to down, and immediately we were logged out of the Control M Web. As you can see here, tip one of 20 trying to, trying to reconnect. So let's go ahead and log out of here. This is still showing as up. Okay, so now it's showing as down. And let's go back again to, okay. So now it finally logged us out. So let me set this back up. 
Okay, now we see the desired state is up and we're waiting for the controlling web microservice to come back up. Okay, so now we see that the microservice for the controlling web is back up. Let's try to log back in. Perfect, now we're logged back into the control and web. And so just to reiterate, if that control and web microservice is down, you will not be able to log into control and web. Okay, for our third demonstration, I'm going to show you the control and web remove apps. So in some circumstances, the web server cache could become damaged or corrupted and would prevent access to the control and web. You might even see an error like what we have on screen. If this happens, then the files for the web apps will need to be refreshed. And by refreshed, I mean deleted. But don't worry, once the Control M Enterprise Manager configuration agent and the web server are restarted, these files will be re added automatically. To do that, there's a script called Remove Web Apps. The configuration agent and the web server on the Control M Enterprise Manager will need to be stopped before you run this. The demo that I'm going to show you is for Linux. So you'll need to refer to the knowledge article here for the steps on Windows. Okay, so before we run this script, I want to show you the web apps directory and its content. Okay, so this is the, the directory and here is the content. Um, before we actually run the script, we need to stop the configuration agent. And to do that, we run stop underscore big underscore agent and confirm that we are showing the configuration agent okay now that this is down we need to stop the web server do that we run stop underscore web underscore server Now that we have confirmation that the web server is down, we run the command em underscore remove underscore web apps. Okay, so we can see by the output here that these directories were removed. Let's do a directory listing just to uh, be sure. Yep, those directories were removed. Now, to get those directories replaced, we run the start underscore config agent. Perfect. Now, we do not have to start up the web server because it will start on its own. But let's wait a few minutes to, and verify that the web server is up. One more thing to note about stopping the configuration agent of the enterprise manager is that if you do this and you have a high availability setup, this will initiate a failover. So that's just something to keep in mind. To verify that the EM, um, the, the, uh, the web server is up, we run the command EM web underscore status. Okay, you can see that the web server is back up. Let's take a look at this directory one more time see that these files were recreated. In this last demonstration, I will show you how to enable debug on the Control-M web. Once enabled, the logs can be found in the Control-M-web.log file. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so before we change the debug levels, let me show you what the log looks like with the standard debug logging level of error. All right, so we can see logging levels of info, warn. What else we got? Yeah, info and warn. So the we don't have any errors, which is a good thing, but the default logging level for this is error. Now let's change it. To change it, we run the following command. 
be sure we have debug as well. All right, so we have confirmation that the root log level was successfully changed to debug. Let's check out that log file now. Perfect, and we can see that we're now in logging level debug as we can um, see here. Let's change that back. The change is back to the default, which is going to be error. We run the same command, except we have error instead of debug here. All right, and we can see that the uh, log level was successfully changed back to error. Let's take a look at this log one more time. Okay, so now we can see it went from debug back to info. So we're good to go. Here is a summary of what we discussed. We provided a brief overview of the Control M Web and briefly discussed its architecture. We demonstrated that the Control M Web microservice has to be up in order to access the Control M Web. We determined that you will need to have the Control M self service, workload change manager, and managed file transfer installed in order to access the planning and monitor monitoring domains, as, as well as the managed file transfer dashboard. We also showed you how to refresh the Control M Web files with the Remove Web Apps script. And lastly, we learned how to put the Control M Web in debug. Here are some of the resources you can use when working with these different components. Thank you for attending this presentation. We hope the information provided proves useful in helping you to further understand the Control M Web and its processes. We would like to encourage you to provide your feedback on the webinar in the Feedback tab. Please let us know what you thought about the presentation, any topics you may want covered in the future, or any comments and suggestions you might have. Also, we will be sending you a survey in the following days and would appreciate it if you took a few minutes of your time to complete and submit it. You may follow us on social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. The past BMC webinars can be viewed on the BMC Software Control M channel on YouTube. Today's webinar will be posted in a couple of days. We will now proceed with the Q&A session.